Hey everyone, welcome back to our Gravity Sketch tutorial series where we're focusing on sketching a pair of headphones. In our last session, we had covered some quick surfacing techniques to get this kind of result, which is quick, clean, and efficient to communicate your ideas. Today we're going to move into a more advanced workflow for surfacing, which is going to give us a much cleaner and tidier result. The first thing we're going to do is hide these layers in which we did our quick, fast surfacing. All I really want right here is our original, cleaner sketch. The single biggest difference between this advanced workflow and the beginner workflow that we just went through is that we're not going to be creating the object in situ. We're going to be moving these different components to the mirror plane, localizing those mirrors or symmetry, and then moving them back to their actual position. If we break down our pair of headphones to their individual components, we have local symmetry here on each of these speakers, as well as symmetry across the entirety of that set of headphones in this direction. We also have this band component, which also has symmetry in that same direction. So what we're going to need to do is break up this object and move and manipulate our sketch so that we can build cleaner, more precise surfaces across that mirror plane, which again is right in the middle of this pair of headphones right now on that green axis. With that in mind, I'm gonna start by cleaning up the sketch, getting back to my original clean sketch and breaking it up. Basically, I have this mirrored version. If I grab it all at once and hold down that blue dot, I can enter edit mode for all of these lines. So even though they're individual objects, now I'm editing all at once, and I can turn off mirrored for all of those objects at once. I'm doing this because I'm going to take this half symmetry and rotate it all to where it's on that mirror plane structure so that I can create those individual localized components and then move them back into place. So this section here, that bilateral symmetry, I'm going to move that part to where it's clean and on the mirror plane, basically just taking it and rotating it this way. And the best way to move that object is going to be a new tool we haven't really talked about yet. So this hammer and brush icon on our drawing hand, if we hold that down, we can pick the selection tool. That selection tool, we just index click on an object and we have this gimbal that pops up. If you're not seeing it, click the gimbal button on your non-drawing hand. And now we can move across axes and rotating around specific axes, this object to a more distinctive location. If you're looking for precision and accuracy in movement, this is definitely the tool for you. I'm gonna move that back down a little bit closer to my origin. And in this case, I'm actually going to grab it all and turn on mirror mode so that I can see how that object is currently lining up to that axis. So again, just grab it all, hold down that blue button and turn on mirrored. Now you'll see I've kind of duplicated all those lines and I can see visually where it's lined up and where it's not. So I can either use smart move like we had done in previous videos or that selection tool to really just align it a bit better across that axis. So what I've done now is taken this local symmetry and moved it to the position of global symmetry so that I can build out all of this surfacing in a more precise and easy to manipulate kind of way. And just to keep the room clean, I'm gonna go ahead and make a new layer and call this, let's make it cleaner and more precise. So that way I have my object on a new layer. I don't have to worry about accidentally affecting one of my other locked layers. So now I'm going to lower the opacity on that original sketch so that I can surface over top of it just like last time. But now I'm in a position where I have that local symmetry on the mirror plane. And this is where we start to diverge into the more advanced workflow. I have a cylindrical cross section here that I wanna make sure is a true circle. So instead of using my surface tools, I'm gonna to go down here to shapes. And I'm gonna click the cylinder tool. You can also do the same workflow with the round tool down here. But in this case, just because I like the cylinder tool, I'm gonna to use that. I'll click on that again so that I know that I'm using my central line. And what this will let me do is now I can use that same axis relocating technique that we had talked about in earlier videos. And I can half click to line that up to my origin point. And then now I can right click with my index trigger or drawing hand click to make a cylinder there. Let's go ahead and recolor the cylinder to something that's a bit easier to see. Let's do a gray. And now I'm gonna smart move that over to where my cylinder is actually located in my form. So I'm just moving that around and using the edit mode tool to resize that. And now I know I'm trying to really just get this half section here. I don't care too much about the other side. And if I go into edit mode, I can't really edit too much. I only have these axes that I'm seeing here. So what I'm gonna do is resize that appropriately, 
probably make it a little bit thinner so it's just the thickness of my earphone pad and move it down into place. Really, I'm just trying to align this as well as possible to my sketch right now before I convert it to a subdivision object. So because I only want this bottom half, I'm going to go in, grab that object, go into edit mode, and hit this button to convert to subdivision object. When I click that, it's going to change this object from a primitive into the subdivision equivalent. So now I have all these points that I can move and edit. I'm gonna delete out the top and bottom surfaces and also manipulate some of these points so that I only have that half circle cross section that I want. Right now, this surface is mirrored, so I actually don't need this left side. I just turned off mirror, turn it back on, make sure these points are welded across the mirror plane, and that's a cleaner, better way to interact with that. Now let's move this point a little bit closer to the center of this pill shape so that when I move it and duplicate it to the other side, it's going to be a bit closer to coincident. So now that I have this half of that pill shape, I'm going to exit edit mode, duplicate it outward, and use my selection tool again for precise movement. Then I'll use that rotation around the red axis. And while I rotate that, if I hold down on my non-drawing hand index trigger, I'll get these increment snaps. So I'm snapping to 180 degrees, and then I will just move it over into place so that I have both sides of that pill shape now. So this is again, a more advanced thing that we haven't gotten into yet. But when I exit that selection mode, I'm going to go back in and I'm gonna lower that opacity a little bit, but I need to combine these two surfaces to make that whole pill shape. So whenever I have two surfaces, there is one specific way to connect them to turn them into one single surface. And the best way to do that is to grab one, go into edit mode, and then on our drawing hand, we're gonna have this hammer and brush button, which is our tool belt for edit mode. Go all the way over to the right here, and this is the merge and separate tool. Now, when it's blue and I click on an object, it merges those two surfaces into one surface. So because of that, I can pull these points together and snap them as if they were a single surface, and I'm left with a nice pill shape that I can use to kind of drive the rest of my form. At this point, the workflow is pretty similar to what we showed in the beginner tutorial. I'm just duplicating this object up, scaling it down, and using these as more or less effective guides for the rest of my shape. I'm just smart moving that object into the position that it should be in for my actual sketch indication. And again, I can scale that up and down along the smart axis movement by using my scale in conjunction with smart move. So I'm just moving that manually to where it's just in the right spot. And once it's there, I'm gonna actually go into edit mode, maybe manipulate that, make it a little bit longer to line up with the rest of my sketch because this isn't a true echo inward. But the nice thing about this is that I have all the same points. So that's gonna be important for the next thing I'm gonna do, which is take this object and build this kind of skin between those two sides. So edit mode, merge and separate, merge. Now I can build out the surface between these two objects and I'm just grabbing those edges, pulling them out, duplicating them and dropping them in its spot. I'm gonna turn off my subdivision level so that it's just a little bit easier to see these edges and make sure that I'm building the topology correctly. But you notice all of these are four-sided shapes. They're all polygons. We don't have any end guns here. And because I duplicated my outer form inward, all of these points are gonna be really easy to align between these two guide shapes that I've created. So that's really important when you're building out these kinds of true, proper, primitive forms uh, so that you're not left with any weird stuff going on in terms of topology or surface transitions. I'm gonna get this edge to the final spot, close up that shape, and what I'm left with now is a really simple pill shape. But if you remember from the last sketch, I had this idea of kind of a, an obvious indentation or concavity. So I'm gonna add that edge loop in here, turn on my auto select edge loops, and manually move that down. I can do it through smart move, or I can go to that tool belt, use the selection tool, and now I can move, edit, or scale that edge loop with a bit more precision. So this is much easier to dial in that highlight, dial in the way that, that surface is transitioning. And I'm gonna add some edge loops here just to tighten up these radii, but what I'm left with at the end is a really nice clean pill shape that can influence the rest of my design as I move forward. So this has been a lot all at once, but this is how you work through the precision advanced workflow. Next time we're gonna go into modeling the rest of it, but Hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you in the next session.